Hi everyone, we're going to be talking about conditionals right now, or control structures in general. So the idea is, these are very fundamental to computer science and programming. Every single real programming language, quote unquote real programming language, has to have some way of controlling the flow of data or how the program changes. So if the data looks like this, then do this. If you put your name as David, you do this thing. If you have, if your social security number or social insurance number looks like this, do that. W whatever the case is, the conditions change how your programs operate. That's actually one of the fundamental parts about a computer that we discussed earlier. And just to review, we've done our overview, initial overview of how C looks. We looked at functions and we looked at scope, and we even looked at arithmetic functions as well. And I think some briefly, uh, uh, briefly looked at printf and scanf statements, so input and output. Control structures are so fundamental that I could have put them in front of all of those other parts. The question is, what are you controlling? If everything is in the main function, I did, you know, I want to get you out of the habit of just putting everything in the main function, but control structures allow the actual stuff to happen. Uh, and so we could do a lot more interesting stuff once we get this. So, and by the way, in case when I said real programming languages, I remember when I was first learning, I said, well, I don't know, you know, C, when I was wondering if I could get an exemption for taking a programming course, well, I don't know C, but I know HTML. And the professor that was talking to me sort of laughed at me. The reason she laughed at me was that HTML doesn't really have a lot of program control. Now, CSS has some rules and control things, how to control things. The JavaScript in a lot of web pages has this program control, but HTML itself is just a markup language. It's just marking up a text file. Real programming languages need some way of controlling how you flow through the program, if you do this or uh, depending on the circumstances. And so we're gonna look at three different ways we can change the path that our program works. But let's just review what we were looking at last time around. So here is a flowchart that we were talking when we first were looking at algorithmic, algorithmic thinking. I cannot talk tonight. Uh, and so we had some kind of condition like, hey, is the number of enemies killed greater than 10? If so, then display you've won. Otherwise, display keep playing. Or what I could have done, I guess, is instead of saying display keep playing is, you know, looped around again or, you know, play more. whatever the case is. But notice that that diamond is so fundamental that it's, it, it's one of our basic symbol sets that we have. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we're, we're gonna look at if, else if, and else statements. In particular, we're gonna spend a lot of time on ifs in particular and look at Boolean algebra. Then we're gonna look at switch statements, how uh, it's another version, they're effectively Everything you can do in a switch statement, you can do in an if else statement. It just can look a little clunky. And then we have this little shortcut, one line way of doing an if statement called a ternary expression. But if, else if, and else statements are the absolute required things for most languages. Uh, so what we want is we, we need to be able to do a lot of different kind of decisions. You know, is this value greater than this? Is this string equal to David? Is this uh, the text David? Is the value equal to this? Do I have that? Did I get the master sword? Whatever the case is. And there's effectively almost an infinite number of different ways or different kinds of tests I want. I want to be able to test all sorts of things, whether it be it algebra, involving algebra, involving strings, involving comparing two things. But at the end of the day, in all of these cases, it's always a true or false statement. So it might be, is the variable equal to four? Is the length of the string x greater than eight? Right? These are different things, but it's always just true or false. Never anything else. And it turns out, well, we're going to look at true or false, but uh, so we will have some kind of condition if some kind of condition and that condition is just something that's true or false. When you look at it, you go, well, that's true. Or you look at it, you go, oh, no, that's false. Or it will return false, right? That's what we mean by a condition. That's why it's called Boolean algebra or Boolean, um, Boolean logic. Propositional logic is another term you might hear. It is an entire branch of logic named after Charles Boole that relates only with 
true and false statements. There is no sort of, there's no, mm, I'm not so sure, there's no kind of. It's true or it's false, there's no in between. There's no sort of. And that changes how you view things because you need to, you know, you need to think of the world in terms of how can we say this and it be always true or always false. Like it's true or it's false. You don't have a, I don't know. When the data comes in, you will get a true answer or you'll get a false answer and that's it. Okay. So, and by the way, in terms of conditionals, we have, well, are two things equal to each other? That's the double equals, not the assignment equals. We'll go over that again. We have not equal to something. So X is not equal to Y. We can have less than, we can have greater than, we have less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. In fact, we don't even need those things. Those things are just sort of normally for math and a couple other things. A condition in, ja in, in C is either it's true or it's false. Well, okay, that's, that's, I've already said that. It's either zero, meaning false, or not zero. What? Yeah. There is no true or false exp you know, variable in C. There is no, um, when I do C, I, when I check to whether two things are equal, or when I check to see if variable X is less than Y, I get either a zero, meaning it's false, or I get a not zero, meaning it's true. And that's under the hood. You don't need to necessarily know this, except for when it gets into weird situations, when we get cases where things go a little bit wonky. But so just letting you know, at the end of the day, those conditionals are checking to see if something is true in the, the, the value inside of that if statement is equal to zero or it's not equal to zero. Um, so unlike an assignment, so the comparison unlike an assignment is not, but you don't actually change any variables. You're, you shouldn't be changing any variables. You're just seeing if these two things are equal or if something is less than the other one, right? It, you're just comparing to see if this thing is true. You're not, you should not be changing variables. Um, we're gonna look at binary, uh, should be Boolean logic. Oh, binary logic operators, so. Uh -huh. um, so this would be, when we look at a binary number and how we break down that number, but we'll get to that later on. Again, just to remind you guys what I, we talked about when we did the overview, a single equals is assignment. That is not the same as a double equals. It will get you into all sorts of trouble because I technically can put a single assignment in my if statement and because it resolves to not zero, it is always true, I do believe. It's wrong no matter what. It's logically wrong, right? I'm assigning x to the value of three instead of saying checking to see if x is equal to three. But as a result of this, x is equal to three. I make x equal to three, and it's true. Why? Because I've set it to be equal to three, and I'm I'm just I have some kind of return value. This is the problem that we have. That this is a very very common mistake where people will put a single equals when they actually mean a double equals. Double equals for conditions, single equals for assignment. All right, so here's what it kind of looks like. If the number of enemies is equal to number of monsters, do whatever is in here. Or I could say, if the number of zombies is equal to 22, then do whatever. I can have a variable, I can have a constant, I can have a function returning a variable. It doesn't matter. The entire thing has to be, this just has to be a true or false statement, right? Is the number of zombies equal to 22? Yes, then it's true. Otherwise, it's false. We can also do non-equalities, right? This is equality, the double equals. Not equal would be something like, if the number of zombies is not equal to three, do it, right? Which is the exact same thing as saying, oh, we can also put a, by the way, just in case um, <clears throat> you want to look at this, so number of zombies equal the number of monsters. If I want the not of that, I could just put a not symbol right in front of this thing right here. And if I put a not symbol in front in front of this thing, is the exact opposite. That's all that the exclamation mark does. It is not whatever this thing is. So if Number of zombies equal to monsters, 
not that. Okay. So, or I could say does not equal to three, or number of enemies does not equal the number of monsters. Um, so effectively, if something is true, then not something is false, or not some, if something is false, then not something is true. It just negates or flips around whatever you have. So I, could, I also have the greater than syntax, so number of zombies is, equal to, is greater than 12. I have the less than syntax, number of zombies is less than 97. Uh, and notice, because it works the way that normal mathematics work, so number of zombies is greater than 12 is the exact same thing as 12 is less than the number of zombies. You can put it in either order. Just got to you got to flip the sign and flip the the order, but it works. And here would be me using the not symbol again. And the exact same logically, the exact same thing. Number of zombies is less than or equal to twelve. Not that, right? That is the exact same thing as saying number of zombies is greater than twelve. Me saying the number of zombies is less than or equal to twelve. Not. This is logically equivalent. That's why you actually learn logic in a lot of uh, computer science programs. I used to teach it. That's why I get so excited by it. We have, so we had greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, it's not the same as the normal math symbol. Why? Because we're lazy and we didn't want to have to type that thing out. Um, honestly, it, that's got to be the answer. Be I know I'm lazy. Every programmer I know is lazy. Nobody wants to find some special fancy symbol in there. They want to just be able to type it on their keyboard. So I can type that on a keyboard. Therefore, I'm going to use this. I'm not going to use this symbol here. Okay. And again, equals open print is not the same. That's actually an arrow. It actually means something different. This, it looks like a sad face on its side, I guess. Maybe sad robot or sad alien. Anyways, it's not a symbol that we're looking for, right? It has to start with a greater than or less than symbol. So when we come back next time, we're going to be looking at else if and else. We just wanted a little short video here. Uh, and we're also going to be looking a little bit more at what we can do with an if statement. Thanks, everyone.